Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my sewing channel uh, where I have a variety of things that I like to do like cloning, using indie patterns, using commercial patterns, uh, drafting my own, refashioning, all sorts of things like that. So if you like to see a grand variety of uh, options you have for sewing, uh, you've come to the right place. Anyhow, today I have a big fail to show you. Now, I have had fails in the past. For the great majority of them, I've been able to like salvage them and like do something to them. Um, <laughs> I have um, in my Make 9 one dress that I was set on making. I find it really beautiful. I really like the collar and it's the McCall's 6891. It's a really nice shirt dress and I wanted to make the sleeveless version there. Uh, so I did all the work you know everything so this is the second attempt I've um, made recently with a commercial pattern as I've told you before I did not have any commercial patterns at all you can't buy them here they don't sell them you know <laughs> so uh, last year at the end of the year uh, Natida from Natural Dane she sent me about 10 patterns that she was having at this stash so those are the ones I have so my first attempt at a commercial pattern was this top that I'm wearing now and it was very successful um, all the steps that you do before sewing, like looking at all these things at the back of patterns about the measurements, you know, uh, the size I chose for this, you know, it, it, I had a good result, you know. So um, I did all the process with this one too. So I read all the numbers at the back, you know. Um, this pattern uh, only comes in the ranges of 8 to 16, so 16 is the largest size. And um, according to my bust measurement, which is the only measurement they give you here to choose your size, I find that really bizarre. <laughs> There's no waist or hips. Um, but yeah, 16 has a bust here for 42 and a half and my bust is 41. So I thought, yep, 16 is good. Um, I'll cut the largest size there is here on the pattern and I'll be sweet. Um, so yeah, I did all the work. Uh, I traced, I cut out my patterns on another paper. I did all the markings, the layout. <laughs> um, so yeah, I started sewing um, and now, I don't know if I've said this before, but I don't follow instructions. Um, I usually uh, prioritize certain steps according to my experience and for this particular dress I wanted to get the collar in as soon as possible like that was my the first steps you know it is that type of collar putting some line drawings there it is that type of collar there so I wanted to finish that first before I stretched anything out and distorted anything um, so I did that and I hadn't done a collar like this in a long time but it wasn't that hard. All the pieces matched beautifully, I got the collar in perfect, um, you know, you do the, the shoulder seams, then I did all the collar, the facing and then I went on to attach the front bodices, you know, to the skirt pieces and they didn't match and I thought, oh that's weird, maybe I stretched out the skirt at the waist. There was like that much of an extra bit on the skirts, on the back and the front. Um, then I grew slightly suspicious. I'm like, what did I do? Like, it can't not match. So I quickly just pinned the sides, you know, of the dress. I had the collar perfectly sewn in, everything. I had skirt pieces attached, you know. All I had fl uh, flapping around here was the side seams. Because that's a, the order which I usually do things, like dresses. So I, I pinned on the sides, I tried it on and it was like, oh, it just did not, I, I knew immediately it wasn't going to fit. I'm like, what did I do? Like, I had extra fabric on the skirt pieces. Then it dawned to me uh, that I could have done something, um, which is really, really not smart of me. <laughs> like, I don't know how to say it nicely. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I had a bit of a think and I, I went back to my pattern pieces, the original pattern pieces and I filmed a little bit here of all the conclusions I arrived. So that's coming in now. I reopened all the pattern pieces and I, I was suspecting I had cut the wrong sized bodice. And what I, this is my uh, traced one, you can see it's 
already been pretty used. I made all the markings on it and I labeled I labeled it as size 16 front bodice McCall 6918. So um I came to the size 14 uh, piece that's right there. I don't know if you're gonna see it. And I placed this on top and it, it was the exact match. So yeah. <laughs> I had a bit of a, a brain freeze and I traced out the bodice of the size 14 thinking it was 16 in my head. Now that tiny tiny thing, I'll do a close up. It's so small where it says size 14, um, yeah I don't know what but I guess I thought that was 16 in my head, um, yeah. So I cut a size too small. Now for the sake of science, I have trimmed around the pattern piece of the 16 because it was in another page uh, to compare. Uh, so if I place this on top there, um, yeah, there's a considerable difference here between the side seams, between the 14 and the 16. I'm going to do a close up. If you see here, there's at least five eighths of an inch different or one and a half centimeters there in the circumference yeah <laughs> so i did the same thing with the back pattern piece um i have it here back pattern piece so i've also labeled it a size 16 but i traced out the size 14 just to keep it consistent <laughs> And I know I, I don't do size 14. That was just a huge error on my part. So if you consider 5 eighths of an inch, that's 3 centimeters. That's 6 centimeters smaller than, um, than my measurements. And that is considerable. It does not let me do the overlap here. It just lets me meet in the middle. Um, yeah. So stupid mistake. Rookie error really because I'm not used to tracing this um, so in the future and what I'm gonna do now actually I'm gonna tr I'm gonna cut out my original pattern piece in the size 16 because um, this pattern I have it here this um, I have the pattern piece that's from size 8 to 16 so 16 is the biggest size available so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out. Um, I'm going to cut out the skirt, everything. And the next time I do it, um, I'll get a better fit. But for this time, I just can't invent seam allowances on my sides where I don't have fabric and the dress just does not fit. So it's a real shame, but oh well, it was bound to happen someday. Yeah, so um, I don't know if I've told you before, but I usually separate a few days at the end of the month or the beginning of the month where I just cut cut all my projects for the month. So basically I cut this top and I cut that dress, you know, within a couple of hours of each other. Uh, for this blouse, I cut a size 14. Anyhow, I had chosen a size 16 for this dress. So um, yeah, I thought I cut the bodice pieces on the 16, but I, I really cut out a 14. Those are the ones that I traced. And that is me being distracted, me not being into the thing, you know, like 100%. Um, I've always got things going on around me while I'm sewing uh, in certain parts of the day. Um, if I recall, I was cutting out these projects in the afternoon and that's usually when my family's here in the house and I'm with them and stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, I couldn't, I, I, I just couldn't get any more seam allowance, you know, I, I made the seams on the sides as small as I can, but I only could reduce them to three eighths because the fabric is not that sturdy and if I made them smaller, the, the dress would start ripping. So yeah, the other thing I did to try and salvage this was eliminate the back darts of the bodice. There are some pretty hefty back darts there. And because I had a bit of extra skirt width, because I cut the 16 on the skirt and the, I cut the 14 on the bodice, that's what gave me all that extra bit on the skirt. So I thought I'll eliminate the back darts. Um, I, you know, fix the back skirt, whatever. I tried it on again and I still can't wear it. So 
I'm gonna try it on for you now and show you here with pins and I hope you don't see anything because it's like <gasps> yeah so just a second and I'll be wearing it okay so I've got it on and you can see here on the top the, the fit is really nice um, see the collar there I really like how it looks it turned out really nice it lies nice and flat Oh, the fit here is really nice. So basically, I think I am a size 14 up here above the bust. <laughs> anyway, I'll stand back. And there, you could, you might think I could wear it. But I can't even breathe. I can't breathe. And this part that should overlap at least three centimeters, I've got it with pins there, overlapping like a centimeter. And that is not acceptable to put buttonholes and buttons. And at the waist here, the waist bit, I've, over, I've overlapped it like a centimeter. And I can't even breathe. <laughs> it's just not. So, yeah. Uh, look at this. It's just a beautiful dress. It's just flowy, everything. Um, the, the arm here, I didn't finish the armholes with bias tape as soon as I realized this was not going to be something I'm going to be wearing anytime soon. I quit basically. Um, I haven't hemmed it, I haven't done button holes, anything. I basically can't overlap, you know, this part here. It's just like almost just together. I've just overlapped it like a centimeter to be able to pin it closed or else you'd just see my belly and my bra. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is a fail for me. Uh, although it's not complete fail, I think I need to lose about four kilos. Yeah, about four kilos to be able to fit comfortably in here. And I mean, I don't like sewing for the future. I like sewing for the body that I have now. That is my philosophy. Um, I'm not the type that will buy a smaller size pant, like jeans. And I remember my, my girlfriends in, in, when I was in university would go shopping uh, for jeans because I've always bought my jeans. And they'd be buying a size smaller and they couldn't even breathe. They couldn't even get them up. And I'm like, why do you do that to yourself? Just buy your size. And they'd be like, no, 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 I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to lose weight. And they never did, you know. They, were, they, they just had jeans that they never ended up wearing because they were so uncomfortable. I don't believe in doing that to myself. I believe in buying the, the clothes for my size and sewing for my size. I'm just holding my breath in here. Um, so yeah, making a, a dress really small so that I can wear in the future, that is, it doesn't, it doesn't go with the way I sew. I like to sew for the body I have now. And this is why this is a fail for me. Um, and it's not a fail in construction, the dress is beautiful. It's a fail in the one of the most important things that you need to consider as a seamstress using patterns and that is just assessing the right size beforehand. Now, I don't do a toile. If I would have done one, um, I would have known. So let's consider this my toile, <laughs> which is really sad because the fabric is so nice for a toile, you know? It's not a fabric that I would be happy to like, just, you know? Um, so yeah, I really like the fabric, so it's a real shame, but I can see I can see a slight possibility of me wearing this at the end of the year, maybe November, December, when I've lost four kilos. Um, it's very hard for me to lose weight. I do all the right things. It's just, uh, uh, yeah, my body doesn't like to do that. Um, so it takes me a very long time to lose weight very slowly. So that's the way it is. So with all fails and errors in life, in all aspects, you know, there's always things to learn. And what have I learned with this mistake? Um, just prioritizing this process of the garment making. So choosing your size, trace, tracing your pattern, putting on fabric is just as important as, as getting the construction right. And in the past, I've made a mistake of actually doing this while watching TV with my family. I'm like cutting away and doing things and that doesn't, that doesn't uh, have my full attention, you know? Um, I will make mistakes and I've made a mistake this time <laughs> so um, that is one thing that I can learn the other one is doing better flat measurements um, I did do a, a flat measurement but just under the arm side and I, I measured that and I thought yeah that's fine and actually that fits me fine just here 
like above the, the bust that fits me really good so I shouldn't just trust one flat measurement just this circumference you know because I have all the other part of the skirt um, in essence I should have I don't know <laughs> I should have just cut a size 16 right <laughs> yeah if I would have had one size extra I would have the normal overlap here um, that I would need to be able to wear this comfortably and not be like yeah I'm really uncomfortable right now and I've seen women wear dresses that are like exploding off them like the buttons are bulging and they seem quite happy to dress like that I, I don't I don't feel happy like that I don't feel happy and comfortable wearing a garment that <gasps> has me constricted and I can't move and I can't breathe so yeah um, I like this dress you might see me wear it in a couple more months and when I do I will show you if it fits me <laughs> and yeah but this is not the last time I want to make this dress because I really do want to film the collar process for you this is not the last time I'm going to make this dress I, I am going to make it again in a size 16 I'm not sure if this month or the next um, but I don't want to give up on it because it's such a nice design I really like it. I really think this V uh, neckline like that you know is really flattering the collar is beautiful I think it's a really flattering dress if it fit me so yeah I'm not gonna give up <laughs> and you might see me wear this in the future maybe at the end of the year anyway I hope you enjoy seeing me fail for once you know <laughs> and that you can learn something as I have learned something that is all for now uh, so have fun sewing, concentrate while you do it so you don't make mistakes. <laughs> Bye, happy sewing.